Ben Kabe. We'll talk about all things small, small and big. Big hand of applause, please. Right. Good afternoon. Um, I am Benjamin Kabe. I work at the Eclipse Foundation, and you might or might not know that we have lots of cool uh, open source projects for doing IoT. And today I want to talk about Lightweight M2M. Who knows Lightweight M2M? Who's heard of it? Few people, well, a couple of people. Uh, who's heard of Co op? Maybe later, uh, earlier this afternoon. Okay. So, yeah, the idea is to talk about device management. And I don't have a remote, it seems. Okay. Um, well, the thing is, of course, the IoT, now we have all those cool protocols like MQTT and all those frameworks for home automation and so on and so forth, but how do you actually manage the device? Like, when you have a fleet of, of devices, how do you reboot them? How do you set the, the, the settings, like the cellular modem settings? How do you manage the software that's running inside the devices, including maybe the firmware? Um, how do you change the settings of the software that's running? How do you monitor that the device is communicating in a, uh, uh, in a correct manner, like you want to see how many bytes were sent and received and stuff like that. So you need to do device management, right? So usually what you will do is that you will have um, your devices on the field that run some sort of agent, uh, ideally something that's built in the firmware and that will uh, allow at any time from a device management server that the device is talking to, to do actual device management. So usually you will have, um, uh, you will try to set up a, a secured communication, right? Either uh, using certificates or uh, using pre-shared keys. If your device is very constrained, that might be the, the best option. Um, but yeah, the idea is that from the device management server, which might not actually be the server where your, um, I mean, if you're doing a smart thermostat, you might not host the actual uh, data, application data might not live in the same server than uh, the server that is being used for device management, but still you need to have this infrastructure, right? So um, there are a few standards. Some of them have been around for, for many years. You might have heard of TR-069. OMADM is what is used basically in all your cellular, um, uh, in, in your mobile handsets, right? This is how uh, the carriers upgrade the, the, the radio module in, in, your, in your device. And there's a new standard, um, a more recent standard called Lightweight M2M. It also comes from the Open Mobile Alliance, the guys who did uh, OMADM. And uh, yeah, basically all those protocols are here to help you manage a fleet uh, of devices. And no matter what is the actual software that you're running, you're really at a lower level. You want to manage the, uh, the device, right? So Lightweight M2M is built on top of co-op. Uh, OMADM, the previous version was HTTP, SOAP, XML sort of stuff. I mean, there were uh, other transports as well, but uh, it was very heavy. Um, and uh, Lightweight M2M is really meant to be very, uh, very lightweight. The fact that it runs on top of co-op means that, uh, well, not only in terms of bandwidth, it's gonna be very efficient, but it also means that actually you can have some uh, funky uh, ways of doing the actual transport of your device management uh, packets in the form of short messages. Like if you want to, to bootstrap your device over SMS because, well, just the internet connectivity isn't there yet, uh, you, you may use SMSs for that, right? Um, oh, looks like I have a duplicate. I knew, th I, I, knew I had it coming. Um, so yeah, basically the idea is co-op is, uh, is rest on top of UDP. Uh, you may or may not know, now you know that. Um, so it's basically a very lightweight mechanism for doing, uh, for doing REST and basically what Lightweight M2M does is standardizing a set of resources uh, as in HTTP resources basically that you can get put post to update them, query their values and what uh, Lightweight M2M standardizes is a set of objects, a set of resources if you will that have well-known names and attributes for accessing the battery level of the device, accessing the number of SMSs you sent, the SMSs you received. Uh, and there are other uh, initiatives actually to also standardize um, resources like what is an acceleration, what is a temperature, what is a humidity. So these, uh, this would be something that the guys at IPSO are, are actually standardizing. Um, so the, the features in a nutshell, um, maybe one of the most important, maybe the most uh, impressive as well in that it, it really allows with a very lightweight protocol to do firmware upgrade, but in general you will use lightweight M2M for doing uh, everything device monitoring 
and you have also all the, it standardizes all the workflow to do the initial bootstrapping of the device. Uh, typical use case is you, you leave the factory, uh, the device isn't ready just yet, right? You're working on the new super awesome Nest thermostat. The hardware is ready, but the software stack, well, it's still full of bugs and you want, uh, um, you don't even know maybe your, you don't have all your server infrastructure yet, but you know that eventually there will be, uh, there is a cellular modem or there is, uh, there will be a way to, to, to reach the device. So you will be able to bootstrap the, the server credentials over SMS maybe uh, uh, or over uh, other means. So the standard objects, there is like seven of them, I think, uh, the device, the server, you might have actually several servers, fallback uh, servers or everything related to connectivity. The GPS location would be available as part of Lightweight like M2M as well. The firmware, and we will see that in the demo later on, and they all have super short uh, numerical ident identifiers, as in like uh, if you were doing HTTP gets on uh, resources that, that are very short numbers instead of being like huge URLs. So yeah, um, a, an object like say uh, a location uh, will uh, actually have, may have several instances. So that's how you would organize your, uh, your resources hi hierarchy. Uh, if you're talking about a location, location is object uh, number six, and it's very likely that it's, there's only one instance of a location, right, on, on, uh, on your device. So slash six, slash zero, slash one, for example, will be attribute number one for your location or attribute number two would be uh, the altitude. Uh, what is nice with, with, nice with Lightweight M2M is that you can query either uh, a specific resource or you can query or uh, get or update uh, directly a complete, uh, complete object at once um, by issuing a, a, a request on the instance. And in that case, you can retrieve uh, a TLV encoded um, a value or uh, since you are, we are leveraging co-op in Lightweight M2M, could also be uh, any kind of content type really, it could be JSON as well. Although that might defeat the purpose of be doing something that is uh, lightweight. Uh, so in terms of open source implementations of Lightweight M2M, so this, I mean, Lightweight M2M is a, a, an open mobile alliance specification, but it turns out that there are several companies uh, actively working on providing uh, open source um, implementations of Lightweight M2M, licensed under the EPL and, and, and the BSD license. Uh, so those companies would be uh, CR Wireless, they work on, I mean, they do cellular modems, basically, Bosch, they do tons of connected devices, uh, Zebra Technologies, they do connect devices as well, um, Jim Malto starts getting interested, I mean, all those players collaborate on, on, uh, on open source implementations. On the server side, there is an implementation called Leshen, which is basically a Java stack for, for, for building like with M2M servers. There's also a uh, work in progress for doing uh, uh, clients as well. Um, it's, it's very simple. It's not like based on Spring or any, on any complex framework. It's, um, it's also providing a, a web UI for, for interacting with the devices. Uh, I mean, the server devices connect to the server and then as an end user or as someone who wants to manage a fleet, you will interact with the devices using either the built-in web UI using a, a web UI that you will build yourself or using the REST APIs that Leshan is providing. So it, it implements most of the features of, of like Web M2M, the, uh, the bootstrap, the, the, the encoding, uh, using the, the, the TLV system. Uh, it works well in OSGI containers. Um, you have the security support. There is, it's, it's based on, on Californium, which is a Java implementation of Coop and it has the whole uh, DTLS uh, stack, so you can do certificate based, uh, well, no, not, not yet actually, but you can do pre-shared key um, uh, authentication, raw public key. And um, yeah, that's basically, I mean, it's very simple to build. The source code is available. There's also a sandbox that's available uh, at lichen.eclipse.org if you want to test like web M2M, which we will do actually uh, in the demo. Uh, I won't go through the code in, de in details, but basically the, the, the API for building a, a, a server and for extending the server is really simple. You get nice callbacks whenever a new client is registered. You, you have basically uh, um, a handler to, to the client and 
uh, if you want to update a specific value on, on the client, then basically you will create a, a specific re request, a write request to update. Uh, in that case, that would be uh, resource number 13, it seems. So that would be uh, the date. Uh, resource number 13 on object number 3, instance 0. So that's very likely the device object. And uh, you can perform the, the, actual, the actual request. So that's um, that selection client support is uh, is in, in is under construction. Uh, so you could also, if you are interested in running a Java uh, lightweight M two M client, could do that as well. Uh, project plan is yeah, as I said, uh, certificate based authentication. Uh, the project is still in the process of moving to, to Eclipse.org. Doesn't support JSON just yet. Uh, doesn't support SMSs. But uh, these are features that are in, in the roadmap for the project. Uh, well, I have a similar slide at the end. On the embedded side, and this is where it gets really interesting, Wakama is a C implementation of Lightweight M2M and that runs on very, very constrained devices, as we will see in, in the demo. Uh, it's a C client. It's not meant to be used as, as a shell library, right? It's um, it's a client that you, it's, it's a set of, uh, of files that you use to actually do an, a porting of Lightweight M2M to f to for, you for your specific device. Uh, basically, the only dependency is on sockets, right? You need to be able to open, close a socket, um, uh, and then send and receive uh, on, 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 on the UDP socket. So it's actually pretty easy to, to do the porting on most, I mean, on most devices, uh, it's, uh, the, the API is very, if not POSIX, it's, it's looking very much like, like POSIX. You, maybe there is a, a different name for, for socket send and you will just need to do a, a very simple porting. Uh, there's no built-in DTLS support in Wakama. You have to provide that uh, yourself. But again, I mean, on, on many IoT devices, uh, you do already have support for, for doing DTLS. I mean, you have a, a hardware acceleration for, for encryption and stuff. So it, you're not that far from, from bringing your own DTLS implementation usually. Uh, features that are supported, again, most of the Lightweight M2M features. Um, no JSON support uh, here uh, neither, but you can um, read the read resources, do the observe mechanism. Uh, I didn't mention observe before, but in co-op you can actually um, ask a resource to notify you whenever it changes, so you don't have to pull it uh, regularly, right? And in terms of code, well, you do create instances of the of the objects by using the Lightweight M2M, the Wakama API. So, what is what are the, the the answers you want to provide to the to the read method, to the write method, to the execute method, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then you uh, you basically mount the resources in your uh, all, all your objects and all your resources. You um, you mount them in your in your lightweight M2M uh, in your lightweight M2M client. You establish the connection with the with the server, and if in your lightweight M2M client stack you have usually an infinite loop or a thread dedicated to making sure that I mean any, anything that that uh, that is received. On the on the UDP socket needs to be uh, handled by the by the Wakama stack, right? So what is in the in the roadmap for for Wakama uh, providing uh, the bootstrap? They're uh, working on more examples. There is one uh, on GitHub that for which we will actually see the demo. But yeah, the idea is to provide more more portings to more uh, devices. There is a testing server that's available as part of Wakama. It's uh, far from being uh, production ready. Uh, it's really just used for testing purposes. But I mean, um, it, um, it might be interesting to have a C implementation of a lightweight M2M server to make it more scalable and such. Um, and so yeah, demo time. Actually, um, there are, there are, there's been some work. I mean, the Bosch guys especially uh, uh, did work on, on porting uh, Wacom on many uh, different devices. Uh, not only, I mean, they do port it on their devices, and I cannot uh, show you those demos, but they also ported it to several um, open hardware uh, platforms. So today I want to demo um, Waka Ama running on the embed. So the embed is a Cortex M0 Plus device, and the idea is that I exactly want to replicate um, the use case I, I sort of described earlier, where I'm working on a new super cool uh, IoT gadget. The hardware 
is kind of ready, but the software isn't. So it's time to ship, to, it's time to leave the factory and to actually ship to the clients. So what's going to happen the first time the device uh, connects, right? The software is still full of bugs or is maybe not uh, ready just yet. So what I'm going to show is the Lation Web UI, right? So that's the built-in uh, Lation Web UI. It's nothing fancy. It's really just meant to for uh, interacting with, with your devices. If you really want to build your own device management infrastructure, you will likely integrate Lation in your own backend, right? But still, from this Web UI, you can see all the connected clients. So this is the, the, the sandbox I was referring to earlier, right? Running on Lation.eclipse.org. You see all the clients, you can configure uh, the credentials uh, of your clients as well. Like if there's a preset key that your device are going to use, uh, you can configure the key or the keys uh, from, uh, from, from the web UI, or you could use an API as well. So that, that, that is my, my sandbox. That is my, my embed device. Uh, it's going to connect to the internet through my, I mean, I'm sharing the connection from, from my laptop, but I could have used a Wi-Fi capable device as well. So I'm going to turn it on. Just providing power. All right, device is turning on. And the only, I mean, the only software that's running right now on the device is, is Wakama. There is only, uh, as part of the firmware, if you will, uh, there, is, um, there is my Wakama uh, slash like WebM2M daemon. And at any time, I can use uh, Lishan to browse what are the standard resources, standard lightweight and term resources that are available. So here we're talking about an embed device, an NXP micro, but it could be any other device, right? I, I, they would always, they would all expose the same, uh, the same standard resources. So if I'm interested in uh, reading the device um, uh, object, then I can retrieve the name of the manufacturer, I can retrieve the, the model number of the device, the serial number, the power voltage, etc. So here I did read the wall, uh, the wall content, but I could also read uh, attribute by attribute. There could also be in 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 this example there are, there are only uh, three objects that are uh, made available by the by the device, but there could be more, right? Uh, if you remember the IPSO smart object stuff I mentioned earlier you could decide that you are actually also exposing the, the temperature of the device as a, as a standard resource. And you would know, I mean, it would allow anyone to actually discover the capabilities of the device easily because they conform to, to, to a standard uh, description that is part of the Lightweight M2M standard. So what I'm really interested in in, in, the, in the context of the demo is the firmware object. The firmware object allows me to, um, to write either the package or the package URI resource. I will, I mean, most likely you will use the package URI, but the idea is to flash a new firmware, right? So you can do that in band. You can use UDP and co-op. Uh, I'm not sure that would be a good idea, but you could try and directly write a new binary firmware into resource uh, slash five slash zero slash zero, or you can uh, flash a new, uh, change the value of the URI attribute to just provide the URI to a, um, a binary that is uh, that is available somewhere on the internet and um, downloadable through HTTP or FTP or whatever. So in my case, the name of the binary uh, would be that, that one. It's hosted somewhere uh, on a server. I want to update the value of the attribute. Where am I? All right, I did update the value, but the, have the, the update is, is going to happen as soon as I start clicking the exec method, right? So right now, the device is actually downloading the new firmware. It's going to reboot when it's done. And we will see that, I mean, we're going to turn this device into a more useful device in the form of a device. So in the meantime, it actually lost the connection with the server, right? That perfectly makes sense. And now we actually have a device that blinks an LED, but it's also now running a complete, um, a real application um, that allows me to control and, and to display the, the values of the temperature of a demo that we have on the Eclipse Foundation booth. Um, and I retrieve the temperature using MQTT. So I'm basically running at the, at the lower level, I'm running a Wacom Allegro M2M stack for everything device management. But on top of that, I can do whatever I want. In my case, that is running an application that uses an MQTT embedded client. And 
update the status of the LCD uh, depending on what are the MQTT messages I receive. And for those who have a good visual memory, we can see that now that the device is back. If I ask for the, the, the device information again, the, um, the model number that is being reported is different from earlier. Now I'm basically running a totally different application. So that's, um, that's basically the demo. A few more uh, examples of running Wakama on, uh, on very constrained devices. The Spark Core, you might be familiar with the Spark Core. It's an STMicro uh, Cortex-M3, uh, 20 k of RAM, uh, 128 case of, uh, of flash. And the Bosch guys, what they did is that they ported Wakama for the DTLS uh, for the security support, they ported tiny DTLS uh, with pre-shared key support, so they are not exposing a shitload of uh, of uh, Lightweight like M2M objects. They just expose uh, the device object, but that's still, I mean, uh, that's still useful for retrieving battery level and, and the like. So um, an empty um, an empty firmware, basically an empty app on on the Spark Core would be 75 k of flash, 13 uh, k's of RAM, and adding the lightweight M2M um, example, uh, that is Wakama plus tiny DTLS, is on an overhead of only 3 k's of RAM, 32 k's of flash storage, right? Uh, the U-Blox, it's actually compatible with, uh, with the embed APIs, uh, only it also does uh, GPRS. So in this case, they ported uh, way more um, objects. Uh, they are exposing the server information, security information, uh, firmware, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, and the complete application is the real-time OS plus a command line interface plus uh, lightweight M2M, and it's in the range of um, 80 k's of flash, 20 k's of, of RAM. Yes, I'm actually through the, pre the presentation. So Arduino Mega, same sort of footprint. There is a Lua binding for if you want to do, uh, I mean, for easing the DTLS integration, uh, you could do that using uh, Lua APIs uh, rather than uh, providing a DTLS uh, at, at the C level. Mailing lists, report bugs, and questions that you can ask right now if you have any. Uh, that is a good question. I, 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 I yes, the question is: Is there support for M4 uh, devices like the TICC 3200? Uh, I did start to do the porting. I think it would be uh, it wouldn't be a big deal. I mean, when I was describing that uh, on some on most platforms, uh, porting the socket layer is actually very simple. That's the case for for the TI platform. Like all the socket methods are basically, uh, instead of doing uh, socket send, that would be SL underscore socket send or something. SL being simple link, they are, they are a network stack. So um, no, that would be an, an interesting port to do. I mean, I'm sure that this would fit in the CC3200 is not that constrained as far as I remember. So if you do the porting, please just tell me that, that'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> Are there questions? Yeah? Um, is this possible to run on ESP8266? Uh, is this possible to run on ESP8266? Well, I don't read Chinese, <laughs> so um, I guess it could, uh, it could be possible, right? Um, I just did, I mean, I, I was kind of joking, but that, that is true, right? It's kind of hard to, to find the proper support for, for the device. Uh, but as again, as far as I remember, the the, um, uh, the memory available and stuff would totally be in the range of what I described earlier, right? So that would be, uh, yeah, that would actually be quite interesting to 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 try that and, so and to pr yeah, 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 yep. Uh, yes, there is. So that's what uh, you may have seen in, in, in some slides. There is uh, in co-op there is um, an extra layer for doing block transfers. Like if you want to s to uh, to send large chunks of data, you would need several co-op uh, slash UDP packets, right? So that uh, that yeah, that is supported by, by by the protocol. Do we have time for one last question? Okay. Okay. Thank you very much, Benjamin. Thanks. If you want to stay, we have an open.